it's Corey and Kyra. Welcome to Above the Barn, where every week we have conversations and libations with a legal twist. Yes. So about four or five years ago, we passed the bar. So here we are with you guys sharing and talking about current events and some of our favorite cocktails. So today we are meeting one of the requests of one of our reviewers. Like we told you guys, let us know what you want to drink. We'll make that cocktails for cool. you. So he requested Jameson, and so we're making Irish Manhattan. And Jameson is a great winter drink. It uh, certainly puts some hair on your chest, gets you real warm, perfect for hot toddies. So you can use it for lots of stuff. Lots of people got the flu. It's like record mm -hmm. numbers of the flu. Yeah. We both got the flu. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just hot water, lemon, and J-Mo kind of get, get you moving in your congestion. You know, hey, we give you current events, cocktail recipes. We a nurse, and medical we a teacher, we a party, <laughs> counselors, we bartenders. What else do we you do want from us? So be sure to watch our live or our live video that we posted on Facebook. And also we'll have a snippet of how to make this cocktail on our Instagram feed. And I love it because it's super easy. It doesn't take a lot of ingredients. The only thing you want to kind of watch for if you don't drink it a yeah. lot is just having like vermouth in your house. Mm -hmm. But that's good for martinis too, so you can use it for something else. And the Irish cocktail called for extra dry vermouth, which gave it a little extra kick that neither of us are really feeling. <laughs> so we recommend if you do try it and you don't like it, just add something sweet like lemonade. Yes. Or just skip it all together and purchase sweet vermouth instead. Okay, yes, recommendation. And that was uh, the sweet vermouth is just like regular Manhattan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as opposed to this Irish Manhattan. Right, 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 right. So with that being the case, we're gonna go ahead and cheers and get right into it. And you know, I'm happy it's kind of stiff because me too has taken over the <sighs> airwaves. Okay, it's everywhere. We talked about it on the show several times, yeah. and now it got to the point I fear it. If you join our a Facebook just group where we're talking about all sorts of topics not everything with a legal twist just we're talking uh, right. and I've posted a couple of articles about mm -hmm. me too and women who have claimed sexual assault and now we have seen it again pop up again and just questioning what is this helping or hindering the movement right. where we're trying to bring um, awareness and a sense of sisterhood mm -hmm. or um, sharing some intimate details about what one would consider sexual assault. But now it's questioning, what is sexual assault? What happened? Uh, okay, so Aziz Asami, he is a comedian and he is doing very well and have been doing well. He was just at the Grammys Oscars. He was at the Golden Globes. At the, sorry, I'm all wrong. <laughs> the Golden Globe Awards. And he had a pen on that said, you know, time's up. time is up. And that was in support of the Me Too movement and sexual assault against yes. women. Then right after he mm. won an award, there was someone that felt like that was the time to come out yes. and say that she had been sexually assaulted by him. And the story has <laughs> drawn a line. Some people are agreeing with her. Some are like, uh, it was wrong, but it's not really sexual assault. Well, let's talk about it. Let's get into mm -hmm. it. I mean, the details and even, you know, the ideas about it vary. I know that I'm considering myself a feminist. I'm mm -hmm. all pro-women. Right. But this, this is someone who went on a date with him. Exactly. They dated. I think this no. is like a first date or early right. on date. They were not in a relationship. Not in a relationship, but sometimes you go on a date with people, right? That's getting to know you. Mm -hmm. That's how you figure out if you like someone or not. Right. And I just think he didn't meet the expectations on several levels, but it proceeded. Yeah. And... To me, what a common experience is, he's like trying, he's pushing, maybe he sees a window open and maybe, maybe he sees a window open as a door. So he's mm -hmm. pushing, he wants what lots of people want, I'm not even making it about men, lots of people want sex, right? So he's, he's going for it, maybe he's thinking he's having a great time. But let's be honest, sometimes you think you having a good right. day and the other person is like, yeah, no, ready to shoot go. me <laughs> at you. We the facts kind of get muddy because mm -hmm. it it seems like she was saying no, but there was I don't know if it was a body language or something that was still alluding to him that it was okay to still kind of press on or continue to ask and kind of fill it out a little bit more. See, I didn't, but okay, from what I understood about it, I did, I didn't think they were in a physical act. He's pressing, he's asking, mm -hmm. he's trying. She's like no, and then he she says no, and he's like. Well, like a kid. Right. You know, like, 
Uh, can I have some ice cream? No. Can I have, can have some ice cream? <laughs> you know, they just keep asking until yeah. because they figure they're going to break you down. Right. So, and that's kind of what he did. It's kind of what he did. And then, so there's the, there's the line in the sand. What constitute sexual assault? Feeling pressure, feeling like a non-enjoyable mutual sexual experience versus just someone kind of like trying to wear you down, annoy you. And not just taking your no and walking away with, with the no. Right. Because he didn't work for her, right? There right. is not like the pressure of a job right. where we're exactly. seeing other people saying, well, exactly. he was my boss. I felt like I should or didn't have a choice. I mean, this is exactly. just a date. And it wasn't like he, I'm not trying to be funny, but in the wine thing story where you heard that he kind of enabled the girl from, or this, or kind of blocked her from being able to leave mm-hmm. the room. It didn't seem like she couldn't leave if she wanted to, and she he, she did not want to engage in intercourse. So then he said, well, what about oral sex? And she agreed to that. But then, da da da, the next day on the ride home, whatever, she started thinking about it. She said she went home and was crying. And then she called him or texted him the next day and said, I thought about it and actually that wasn't cool. But in the moment, she didn't say no to the to the oral sex. So it's kind of like, uh. So this is where Me Too gets potentially super scary because can you later change your mind? I will be brutally honest with y'all, okay? There have been some times where some things did not go to quite how I planned. And the next day I look back and I said, <laughs> not how I thought that was going to go but at the but end of the day I think mm-hmm. it's important and I think me too is important to bring awareness to everyone's power Right. and so yes. it can't yes. be one sided if a man has a responsibility to you know monitor his power so does a woman yes. and you have a responsibility to say no and this is not a situation where she just could not consent right she was passed out and he took advantage or right you know no, that was not the if case. that's not what you want then there has to be some way outside of mind reading <laughs> that you express what you want in my opinion and this is me i believe women should um have equal rights I, you know i believe i'm a i'm a feminist at heart but i also am a mother to a boy who doesn't want to see her son caught up in a well, it was it was cool right. then, and now it's not cool the next right. day because we all have buyer's regret when it comes to dating. <laughs> and also, Corey, and and being you know pro women and giving that encouragement and support to women, we also have to hold women accountable, just like mm-hmm. we hold men accountable. We have to hold women accountable, and if you're in a situation that you ultimately do not want to be in, then say no, mean your no, and remove yourself from the situation. Now, if you cannot remove yourself or someone holds you down or forces themselves on you, then yes, that by all means is sexual assault. But if you're kind of in this passive no, but you're still, you know, engaging or talking or leaving them, like kind of leading them on in a sense, then that's where we have situations like this. Now, I'm not saying that he was right. No. No. That's not what we're saying. Ideally, I think these experiences, like you should care uh, men should care, women should care if someone else is enjoying the situation. Yeah. And you should just be like, oh, I like it. So who cares if you like it? But the truth is, you know, and kind of I got in a conversation like this on Facebook today. The expectation, I mean, this is like just saying we're going to live in a, you know, perfect world where everyone's considerate and everybody. Mm-hmm. People often think of themselves first. Yes. That is not an uncommon thing. So if we think that just from now on, me too, I mean, a man is supposed to think you should enjoy it as much as he or he should be as concerned as you are about your enjoyment level. I just don't foresee that happening. (laughs) I just don't because there's a lot of imperfect, imperfect things in this world. And so if sexual gratification is not going to jump to the top of the list above like world peace and everyone having a meal to eat at night for me, (laughs) you know, there are a million concerns about. That we and there was on. something else. Um, there was an article that I was reading. I think you may have posted it. I'm not sure. But in the article, there was a lady who was trying to allude to her having been in a movie scene, in a nude scene. And she agreed to doing the scene. She wasn't happy with having to do the nude scene. Yeah. But she agreed to doing it, to do it. And then she tried to attribute that as a Me Too Situation. Well, like, mm-hmm. that was James Franco because okay. he had a similar situation to Aziz Azari, okay. where he went okay, on a that's date what it was. Okay. with someone, and then she said, "Well, while we were in the car, he asked for um, oral sex." 
um, which like again um, is not to me uncommon if someone's attracted to you attracted to you if they're feeling it and even if you're not so the point is at what point do we say this is sexual assault this isn't there are certainly ways that you would think are ideal for sex but i do not think anybody should be responsible for my reading so he asked her he and asked her and they were on a date they're on a date so how was i don't understand someone asking she you a said question she did not want to make him upset so she did it well, no, you can't. No, I'm sorry. And that's, that's, that's me going back to being accountable and, and empowering women to feel secure and confident in their feelings and your right to say no to someone. If you agree to someone saying and you say yes and they have no clue that you're really objecting to it, you cannot then hold that person accountable and try to charge them with sexual assault. Now, if you don't want to do it, feel empowered to say no. Screw their feelings if you're worried about how they're going to feel this, that, and the other. And I do feel like women do do that a lot. Oh, definitely. And they will lay with the man because of his feelings, his concerns, this, that, and the other. No. Don't do that because you're only doing yourself a disservice. And then you cannot turn around and say sexual assault when that man at no point did you tell him no. I just think it should be empowering to everyone. And then in reminding people of their power, just like you may feel this man, I don't know, James Franco or a famous mm -hmm. actor had power or you know, some sort of influence over you. Obviously, you have some influence over him and his career mm -hmm. at this point. And, you know, so right. power shouldn't be abused either way because right. this movement is now active. And now you can just say, hey, I didn't enjoy our sexual encounter. And it goes under the banner of Me Too, which can have a serious impact on someone's right. career and trajectory. So I just don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it should be misused. And I think we should just have a broader conversation about right. what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. Yes. What, what does regret mean? Hopefully, regret means you've learned a lesson. And if you've called and shared with someone, hey, I didn't enjoy that last night or this wasn't good, I think that's great, that's empowering, that's a learning point for both for, of you. Exactly. But it should not exactly. be like, oh, oh, you have that pin on? Oh, no, I, you can't wear that pin. Right. Because maybe he's wearing the pin because he took After what you said, he received exactly. it, and he said, you know, I want my next. You know, I want women to feel as comfortable as I feel, or be right. as happy as I, am, as happy as I am. But at the end of the day, I mean, uh, it's that natural for that. people to want to look out for themselves first, especially when you're just casually dating someone. They're a stranger. <laughs> and he did say that after that, or she said that after he talked to her the next day, when she called him and told him how she felt about the night before, he was concerned and asked, you know more about her feelings and her regards to the situation so it wasn't like he was just like oh, okay well it happened so you just have to yeah. like whatever no he was you know maybe genuinely concerned with her feelings at the time so i definitely agree that this hopefully opens the door for more communications before sex yeah. during sex like and let me say let me make this clear i don't you if you say yes in the moment and don't say no during the moment the next day you can't come back and say no to something that you did not object to at the time but sex is a continual moment of consent. So if there is something that someone does that you do not want to do, or even if they're doing something and you say yes and you want to stop, you can say no. You can stop. At any you can time. say no. Exactly. And at that point, they cross the line. If the they line continue, is crossed. Right, yeah, exactly. Definitely. So at any moment, like I said, sexual sex is a continual moment of consent. So hopefully the dialogue, this opens up for communication before, yeah. during, and after. So this can be any... Affir you know, affirmative or a rejection that's verbal or nonverbal. Mm -hmm. You push someone away or you say no. You mm -hmm. can do that in the midst of it. And yeah. I just we just want to be clear that there's any point where you can say, you know, I changed my mind, but it can't just be in your mind. <laughs> like you can't be in your mind like, hey, yeah. I don't, I I don't think I like this. Yeah. I don't like him anymore. He smells yeah. like bo. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't leave. Then you have to, you know, say that because no one i mean i don't want to be responsible for reading people's minds yeah. so sweden is trying to get around that and so they have a new law that they're trying to put into oh. place where if you don't give verbal consent or some type of clear communication that you're consenting consenting to sex then it could fall in the category of rape so uh -oh. to try to counteract this some app app developers <laughs> have Created this new app thinking. called Legal Fling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's supposed to kind of use some of the same, um, not the currency, but the same type of technology that's with the cryptocurrency and making sure that it's only you that's logging in and giving consent to something and 
So it's now there's this whole world around app with sexual consent. There's that one, there's good to go. Um, there's another one called Please Please Me, which is more about <laughs> just talking about what you I guys like are this, into prior you to. You like that. Don't right. be, I'm going to pull out this gag ball, but don't be afraid. Please check yes. <laughs> so um, some of them, like I say, use some of the technology from cryptocurrency. Other ones use like, hey, we got to take a picture and sign in and log in and save it to a secret file. Others are you have to go through like a multi-level type of like questionnaire. So the issue is, is this legal? Because is this because they're trying to say it's a contract, but a legal contract has offer acceptance and consideration. So it's like okay, what's the consideration? <laughs> consideration. Um, so there's a whole. And then what if the consideration is an orgasm and they don't give you? <laughs> they could be like, you do not pay your consideration. You do not pay. So you <laughs> violated this contract. <laughs> I don't really know if that's, um, and then people are like, well, why we can't, if, if the issue is communication and dialogue, why we can't just send a text message? And I'm not, I'm not, not even a text. Why can't there just be a conversation? Because, I mean, I think what we're learning now is that if someone, people don't talk. well, they don't talk and they remember very differently. So I may remember yeah, saying, that's true. I, how was it for you? And they say, Oh, it was good, right? And then I was like, okay, go on my day. And you said, oh, it was good. Like, you good. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you may have, like, a whole different My recap goodness. of what happened, That's was true. it good, did I enjoy it? Because now you have, like, a whole list of check marks. It's kind of scary for everybody. Do you agree? Did you agree at 5 seconds, 15 seconds, and 30 seconds, issue. 45 seconds? That's Maybe it's issue. over. <laughs> because it's okay. And like we just said, you can agree at the beginning, but then if you want to, you know, stop or say no at any point thereafter, then you got to log into the app and say, I said no. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no. I don't know. Um, there are actually a couple out there, so. I mean, I think it's even, you know, it's scary for everyone, but especially someone who has something to lose, um, mm -hmm. you know, and someone either, they may actually change your mind or they may just um, change your story. <laughs> Either way, you have to be concerned because what we've learned from several things we've covered in previous episodes, Usher, mm -hmm. you may have, you may not even have had an experience with someone and then they still could pop up and sue you <laughs> and say, you know, they were sexual assault or, right. you know, and now it's such a big story. That kind of story overshadows the truth exactly exactly so and that's a good point because it it does say there was a clear moment where you did say yes and the whole issue with all these different levels is so that someone can go in and manipulate because some of them said well like i just mentioned why not just send a text hey there's a text message i say yes you say yes we were cool but you can go and delete text you can manipulate yes. them you can send it from another phone and change the numbers and all this other crap so there that's where we are. Scary. I mean, this is crazy. So um, apparently, just celibacy. <laughs> Says the language with two kids. <laughs> anyway, hey, because we won't be able to figure that out. Let's talk to something that may maybe a little bit more contract. Um, no, it's still crazy. It's still it's crazy. Still crazy. <laughs> So, California. Um, you want to start with California? Yes, I mean, the okay. big old giant state of California. <sighs> so, Cali. Cali has been making some really big strides in the industry of weed, marijuana, and they've been doing other things that have been more on the liberal side. And there are some counties and cities that are not quite happy with this overarching liberal movement that's going on in California. And they're saying that it's not for the common good, the taxes are outrageous, healthcare is declining, police are a mess, and so they want to create their own state. Now, you heard that. They want a new California. Well, you know, we live in Texas, and often in Texas, there's talk that Texas should be its own nation. We're going to break away. Well, that's from... just a joke. No. <laughs> our governor said that at one point. <laughs> when Rick Perry was governor, I mean, he did, he did say that. Um, and there have been, you know, because I, if you can get enough votes, you can almost yeah. have, a, you know, an idea for anything. So, I, I mean... I don't know if we're taking it very serious, but there are certainly people saying that, hey, there there is a very liberal part of California mm -hmm. on the coastline, and inner California very rural. is very rural and very different 
But you know, I'm, what I'm more curious to see is the overlay of population because in all honesty, while these middle countries, while they may be vast, or mm -hmm. this middle, these middle counties may be vast, they still may not really represent Californians exactly. in count. I think the only like major cities that I saw in the rural area that would be included in the new California were Fresno and San Diego. Whereas in the existing, well, how could San Diego be? I don't know. I thought, it's the right same thing. I thought the same thing. Um, whereas like LA, of course, and um, San Francisco were the urban. They're oh, they were they categorized them as being ungoverned and as if they're just this wild, crazy wild, bunch of wild people, west. Okay, and they don't have any sense, and we don't want their influence on us. So let's separate and create our own state. You know, what you have to, what's well, funny, because, you, you know, that that's all sound good. You want your, you want your interests represented. Yeah. But the thing is, when you separate from the money that you're talking about leaving as a state, I mean, if I was like, if there was like a state to. lottery, if it was like a basketball team, I'd be like, oh, let I'm me give that. that. <laughs> oh, with them. That's where the money is. That's where the money is. So even though they might realize it, may not realize it, one California, it's funny because um, Trump often talks about, okay, well, I'll take away federal funding. California actually pays more money to the federal government than the federal government pays to, them. to California. Exactly. It is a big money maker, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a big pull for that are the exactly. coastline cities. So if you're moving away, you think it's a mess now. Wait till the farming tries to pay for healthcare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. It's not likely that it's going to happen. Um, they will have to prove to their here. yeah. They will have to prove <laughs> to, the, to their legislature that they can govern themselves, and then they can go on to Congress. But the last state to do this was West Virginia, um, and that was like back when they separated, like during the Civil War. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's anything happening. possible, but I think a wiser use of energy, money, resources yeah. is to just really talk about redistricting redistricting mm -hmm. and making sure that at the end of the day you feel we're represented yeah. in the state as well as nationally yeah. I think that's just a better use um, and we can have a whole different conversation about gerrymandering and yes. how districting can really affect yeah. what your impact is um, mm -hmm. and so that's probably a better use but I think they have broken up they have done a lot of things for gerrymandering in California in particular mm -hmm. to make sure that the representation is for a locale as opposed to just drawing crazy lines. And it's, it's not the first time they tried to do this. Because somebody tried to get like six different parts of Cal like break California up into six different states at one point. This is, I think, the sixth attempt to get California broken up to various states. I mean, I think you would have to also sh get... It, it's a lot that they would have to do legally. I don't foresee that happening. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. while some people are obviously... People are always in a fuss about stuff. And you know... We have a very strange political environment right now. Yeah. Case in point, we had a story where our president reportedly, my mm -hmm. mom call it reportedly, fake news, but fake real news. Fake real news. <laughs> that should be a, a thing. F in FRN. FRN. Fake, fake real news. FRN. The FRN um, had has reported from transcripts that last week President Trump came out yeah. of a meeting. About about immigration because I had this fight. Uh, some another attorney was making conversations or had a statement about the countries that he mentioned. And President Trump, in the midst of a immigration policy discussion, said that he named several countries that he described as shithole countries. Fake rules. What? And we had the Democratic um, senator who was in this meeting come out and affirm as what was said. And yes. since we've had. Republican senators come out and say, well, maybe you didn't hear it. Maybe that's not exactly what was said. I think and it's then, shame on you if you just tell a both that's lie, though. Shame that, and then if you know that he said it and you try to act like he didn't, and then that makes me wonder what other obscene comments and statements were made behind doors that, oh, I don't know, you didn't really hear. Yeah. If he, if, if someone you know, heard that and reported it, I'm sure there were many other obscene and just utterly ridiculous comments that he made behind closed doors that other officials very well heard and they represent their constituents that come from these shithole countries. And I mean, I think there would have been, there was a big reaction from Haitians, Haitian Americans because of the strong like 
ties that America has to Haiti, yeah. it being making it possible, the revolution making it possible for Louisiana purchased mm -hmm. places like Texas, Louisiana that were purchased exactly. in, from France at that time were only possible because of the Haitian Revolution. Exactly. Um, but I just, my main, I have two big concerns. One, it is inappropriate in the context of oh, immigration. Oh, if you're talking about places you want to visit and you say that I, I opt out of those places, they're shitholes, maybe I understand. But if you're talking about the quality of immigrants from those countries, because it's an immigration discussion, right? Completely crazy. It does not matter. Some of our best citizens, great citizens can come from anywhere. It's a matter of the person. And almost in the case where you are in an impoverished, difficult mm -hmm. situation, you understand the possibility of America even better. And I don't, I have an issue with it because one, like you just said, you know your history as the president of the U.S., even though we're already well aware that this fool is very ignorant, he doesn't know much of anything. Secondly, I don't think that on any level he should be saying a shithole country. I mean, I know he's going to say a, a myriad of crazy outlandish things, but I just don't think that that was appropriate to come out of his mouth in any regard as the president of the United States, as someone who is in foreign conversations and meetings trying to assist other countries in develop. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, just, it's a, there's a wealth disparity in almost every country, exactly. including America. Exactly. So there are parts of America that are shithole. Yes. That Definitively. So one, A, look at your own country and exactly. be concerned for your own citizens that are living in impoverished parts of America exactly. before you without really knowing, call a whole country shithole. Yeah. That's the first part. You, they're, they're, I'm sure they're very wealthy parts of Haiti too, as well as any other country you mentioned. African countries, Africa is a continent. <laughs> I just need to get that out there. So there's no Come confusion. Come on, man. It's many, 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 many countries in With one them. exactly because it's a continent. It's a whole continent. Anyway, <laughs> that's an aside. We can't just make that generalization in the context of immigration. There's no, you know, that's what the process is for, to make sure we're sorting through, we're getting people who are motivated to provide an impact on America. And exactly. we've seen a lot of um, immigrate, immigrants become, you know, really be, pull yourself up the bootstrap, work really hard. And make a great impact on great impact. individual communities here, Absolutely. states, and the country as a whole. A U.S. would not be what it is in any regard without immigrants coming, coming here. Like, come on now. Like, that's a whole other conversation. Exactly. So, you know. Oh, just, but they were trying to make incentives for, like, Russians, like, coming here and things like that because they would make the U.S. better. I'm well, not I mean, saying he, that. he said specifically Norway. And I just had several people say, well, that was not racist. Hey, it's completely inappropriate. So it's just like anything. If your response for that is to say, "Well, it wasn't racist," that does not make. It's like if your boss walk, walked in your into you and, and said, "You're ugly," but it's not because you're black. Yeah, but um, still, it's still inappropriate. <laughs> if you, if you, whether you yeah. think it's racist or not, it's inappropriate. Exactly. And again. Just where you're from does not is not an indicator that you would make a productive citizen in America. No, doesn't mean that. Not at all. Not at so all. it's actually really sad it is. to me, um, and it was certainly a great insult to Haitians, and I think uh, in several the many countries he talked about. Exactly, exactly. We it was a, it, I think the quote was, well, "No, we don't need any more Haitians. <laughs> Let's get some people from Norway." Don't quote me on that. That's just what I read. So. Um, we, we just hope that conversations yeah, start a little libation and free it up. Because sometimes when you're talking about this stuff, you need a glass. Yeah, need a glass. But it just should away. start with under, uh, understanding or at least being able respect. to receive and respect what yes. someone says. And when yes. you start a conversation dropping little turds of mm -hmm. ignorance, it's very difficult to carry forward a whole yeah. conversation where you're being understanding. A positive conversation. Somebody shitting on the conversation yeah. quote me on that <laughs> so <laughs> that was a lot um hopefully let me not even say hopefully because we're tired of talking about trump but you just know i can't say hopefully you know he gets off our radar but you know it's going to be something else just oh. you know we'll just count the days oh, just to watch count the time he's going to say something else and we'll be talking about it here again but until then 
I hope that you enjoyed our podcast. I hope that you enjoyed this cocktail. Ours are gone. I'm about to say mine is <laughs> Somebody enjoyed. We did. Um, and be sure to watch us, like, subscribe, and share from YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, and Google Play Music. You have five Hi, options. Hi, you. Hi, you. So we really want to hear from you guys. Um, so comment, like, share, and follow us and subscribe. Until next time. Cheers.